Hello everybody, today is Wednesday, July 4th, 2012, and this is what a viewer of mine has aptly named Sixens Fixins. Now, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Kevin Sixen Carlino. I'm the former administrator of DiabloFans.com. Uh, I currently run a daily Diablo show called the Diablo Daily, where I kind of analyze builds, I talk about gameplay fundamentals, and then I also run a weekly podcast called State of Sanctuary, where we analyze uh, the metagame of Diablo 3, obviously. Now, this is very different than what I normally do. Obviously, I do the Diablo Daily, and I do State of Sanctuary, and I livestream both of them over Twitch. I normally don't make videos and put them up on YouTube or whatever. Um, this is in part influenced by Crips video and Athene's video. I felt, uh, felt it necessary for me to make my own. Uh, I'm not going to comment on itemization, magic find, because we know that Blizzard uh, is actively working on that stuff for 1.0.4 and 1.1 uh, in the somewhat hopefully near future. So today I'm just going to be talking about Endgame, and I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet. Um, so yeah, let's let's just get started. I'm going to comment on PvE and PvP, and that's it. I'm not going to talk about real money auction house, none of that stuff. I just want uh, Diablo 3 to have some kind of end game. Um, so here we go. Now in PvE, what I'm hoping to see is something like uh, Pandemonium events. Now back in September of 2011, when uh, Blizzard in introduced Inferno uh, for the first time at Gamescom, I on, I believe, like episode 21 or 22 of the Diablo cast, I had an hour-long conversation with Force about it, and I sat there for the full hour and said, look, Inferno's not an endgame. I don't see Inferno as an endgame. Inferno is an ends to a mean, not the end itself. People, in response to that, came at, with, came at me with pitchforks, and here we are now, people complaining that there's no endgame. So, what I'm proposing, and what I proposed back in September, um, was, was that we have something like pandemonium events. So essentially, um, and here's the reason why I don't feel Inferno is a viable endgame, is because you gear up and progress through Inferno. I mean, Inferno is just a normal difficulty like anything else. Inferno is progression, just like Hell and Normal and Nightmare are all progression-based. Uh, the difference being that Normal, Nightmare, and Hell are all level progression, and Inferno is gear progression. It's still progression. If Inferno was not in the game, would Hell be in the endgame? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't consider Hell being an endgame. Uh, I mean, you get through hell, you complete hell, and then once you're done with hell, you can essentially just beat the difficulty without any issues. Um, I mean, same goes for Inferno. Once you're geared up and you can actually complete Inferno, I mean, you didn't get power leveled, then you progressed through all four uh, acts of the Inferno difficulty, you can usually go back with relative ease and complete the act. Uh, so obviously, uh, you're going to already be geared up. Now, what people are running into is, cool, I just completed an Inferno, you know, legit, I didn't get power leveled, I didn't, nobody rushed me through, why should I continue gearing up? There's no PvP, although that'll be in eventually. PvE, there's nothing to do, I can make money on the real money auction house, but why should I? So at this point, people are like, well, what do I do now? Aside from, yeah, go create another class, or go play hardcore, there's got to be something to do, and this is why I propose Pandemonium events would be a perfect solution. Um, I, I consider this endgame in Diablo 2, even though they didn't get added until relatively later, like 1.10, I believe, or something along those lines. Um, and by pandemonium events, I'm talking about Diablo clone and Uber Tristram. Now, what this is, is it, it, it requires people to gear up for this super hard event. It requires you to farm not only gear, but also special items to make this event happen. So... In the event of Diablo Clone, I understand that that was originally added just to help the economy because Diablo 2 suffered from ridiculously horrendous economic problems. Um, but still, the event itself was fun. People enjoyed playing Diablo Clone. People played through hell. They made they they, they farmed gear. They picked a build. They picked something that could you know specifically fight Diablo Clone. And once they fought Diablo Clone, well, cool. Now they could just go back and do it again. So now. It, it just gave them a reason to farm gear. They're no longer just farming gear to farm gear and look cool. Now they're farming gear to complete an even harder event than, than the game itself. Um, Uber Tristram is the same way. Uber Tristram, you had to farm keys, and then the keys you turned in, into uh, organs, and then the organs turned into just a portal to uh, Uber Tristram. Of course, you know, you use the keys to make the portals to get to uh, Uber Isual and Lilith and uh, Uber Duriel where you got the organs to form the last portal but I mean essentially that's what it was you were farming keys in the normal game to get to these special areas and do these special events which were supposed to be ridiculously hard and they were at first and then from there you went on to Uber Tristram and this was just this was really cool it was tough it was difficult it gave people a reason to farm hell 
for gear and then continue on to try and beat these super hard events and that's what I consider Diablo 2 endgame. Now that's PvE. Now what you're probably wondering is, okay, cool, so let's say we add Pandemonium events. At that point, why, you know, when people can clear that and they can have it on farm, well then what? Well this is kind of where I saw Ladder being uh, relatively helpful and again I know Ladder was introduced only to uh, help the Diablo 2 economy, you know, basically you'd wipe, you'd wipe the economy clean and set everybody else's non-ladder and then have everybody start fresh. The problem in Diablo 3 is that I no longer have any reason, absolutely no incentive to create more than one of each class. Aside from the fact um, that I might play softcore, one of each class on softcore and one of each class on hardcore. Other than that, I really have absolutely no incentive to start all over. And even if I wanted to start over, I can't. I'd actually have to go through, delete all my characters, and have to find somebody, of course this probably won't be hard, to give away all my gold, and even then, my artisans will still be max level, so I, I couldn't even start over if I absolutely wanted to, and there was something cool about just starting over fresh. I mean, it's an action RPG, the goal is to get loot, to progress through the game, to look cool, to complete the, dif the, the difficult events, maybe I want to start over. There is something fun about that in Diablo 2 playing all the way to max level, although that was something different different because, I mean, max level 99 in Diablo 2 was almost unattainable. Uh, most people would, you know, most people watching this are not going to have a 99 in Diablo 2 if they even played Diablo 2. So anyway, I mean, the latter just gave people incentive to keep playing. It added longevity to the game. Um, again, I understand it was originally there for the economic purposes, but it still gave people a reason to start up new characters, to experience the game over and over again. And that is just what I believe helped add longevity to the game. You know, plain and simple. Am I saying add a ladder? I mean, it, it, I think it would help. It would give people, again, a reason to continue playing uh, and playing new characters at that. Now, you could, you, know, you could do exactly what it was supposed to be in Diablo 2. The top 10 players uh, per realm are now immortalized on a ladders page on the Battle.net website. And that's how Diablo 2 ladder originally started off. I think like the first four ladder seasons players' names are hidden somewhere on the Battle.net, uh, the old legacy Battle.net website just because you know, the links to it have died off. But the point was these players got their names immortalized and now they are known as you know, the top players just because they are able to progress through the game the quickest. Obviously, um, this might be a little bit different for Diablo 3, but hey, I mean, you can still do the same thing. Uh, the top 10 players that kill uh, Inferno Diablo on ladder, you get your names immortalized on the Battle.net website, special ladders page, you get some kind of a trophy, uh, you unlock some kind of feat of strength for being an immortalized player. I mean, just very simple things like that will keep people pushing. Uh, and then you just do simple uh, ladder resets you know, every six months. Um, how you go about doing this, I'm not entirely sure, but I still think it's a cool concept, ladder. Uh, and of course, the pandemonium events. Uh, I definitely think that's what's going to help non-ladder players continue playing. Uh, I mean, for me, it's going to give me a reason to, to continue progressing through Inferno, to continue getting these, you know, the best of the best gear, not just to show off, but to play through, you know, these other PvE events that aren't really influenced by story. They're just there to be a challenge, to be fun. Now, this kind of also shoots off uh, into PvP. Now, those people that don't want to do these special events in PvE, uh, they don't have to because there's also PvP and that's coming by the end of the year from what uh, the Bashrock post said. So now, as far as PvP goes, I would love to see a PvP ladder to make it competitive. I understand you guys don't want to do that, um, but why, like, why not? I know you guys want to make it casual, but if we have a PvP ladder, um, that just adds more reason to pe to, for people to continue playing. Um, if you want to keep it casual, fine. Why not do what we're going to do for StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm? Have unranked matches and ranked matches, and it's as simple as that. Oh, and custom games, of course, because we need, want to be able to run tournaments. So, I mean, you just, you literally do exactly what you did for Heart of the Swarm. You have ranked matches for people that care and want to play competitively, and then you have unranked matches for people that just want to play for fun. And really, it's as simple as that. Um, and I mean, it's really just the same exact system. You just make it so that way you don't earn any kind of points on the ladder, or if, you know, should a ladder be added. And that in itself, because humans are inherently competitive, will just make the game that much more fun. Being able to check the PvP ladder to see who the top PvP team is, like that, that's fun. And a lot of people want that. Um, as far as dueling goes, I know Jay Wilson commented, said that he's going to add that sometime you know, in the future, and you guys are looking into it, but I mean, really what I want to see is PvE pandemonium events, uh, competitive PvP, because that's just going to really help... Uh, the longevity of the game, 
and then a ladder for both of them. You know, a PvE ladder to track progression, and obviously level, because level also ties into progression. Um, and then, obviously, like I was just saying, the PvP ladder, where you can track, uh, I guess, point-based progression, or win-based, however it is that you guys want to categorize it. Because I know that this was originally part of the plans. Uh, when you guys first announced PvP, there was going to be a ladder, and there were going to be ranked matches, and custom games, and unranked matches, and then things kind of changed. Obviously, you guys changed your philosophy, but... I mean, it, things like this are what help keep longevity in the game. And again, as it is right now, um, even with PvP being added, people can complete Inferno, they can get cool gear, for what? And that's the, that's the problem. People are saying, well, great, I've completed Inferno and I've got nothing to do. And again, this is what I said last September and people told me I was crazy. Inferno is the end game. And I said, no, it's not. Now, I mean, I'm not sitting here saying, like, uh, I told you guys so, that's not what I'm doing at all. I mean, I'm just making a point. I don't see Inferno as an end game. I didn't see it as an end game previously. So, I mean, it's not that uh, I'm a Fairweather fan or anything. I just, I'm sticking to my guns, and, and this is the case. So, again, PvP, competitive, that's going to help a lot. PvE, uh, pandemonium events, and, again, a ladder. Um, obviously, there are many other things that can potentially be done here, like, you know, post-60 progression, like champion or hero classes type things, like we're, you guys were discussing for World of Warcraft. Um, whether or not that actually is viable here, I'm not entirely sure. But, I mean, I know things are going to have to change. So, thank you guys for listening. I really appreciate it. Again, uh, this is kind of just my suggestions, my tips, my quick little uh, discussion for Diablo 3 Endgame, my thoughts and comments. So, if you guys enjoyed it, again, uh, be sure to watch my Diablo Daily State of Sanctuary podcast. Um, thank you guys. Take it easy. Alright, so I know that I just ended the video like two seconds ago, but as I was watching the first portion of the video and listening to myself speak, I came up with this great idea. So you can kind of think of this as like a scene after the credits roll. Uh, so I didn't want to edit this back in because conceptually all my ideas and points are in the first portion of the video. This is kind of just like an extra bonus thing. So like I said, as I was listening to it, uh, and this is in reference to Pandemonium events, I came up with this great idea. Why not bring us back to the old Tristram ruins in Diablo 3, just like you did in Diablo 2, and have a Pandemonium event there? Let us fight all seven evils. So not just Diablo Mephisto Bail, but Diablo Mephisto Bail, Andariel Duriel, Asmodan, and Belial all at once in their uber forms. So at the end of the Diablo 3, Diablo is supposed to be this prime evil. He's supposed to have all seven essences in one. Why not split them up, put them in their uber forms, and let us fight them all at once? Like, how cool would that be? That's just, I had to get that off my chest. Like I said, as I was listening to the first portion, it just came to my head. So. I needed to get that out there. I promise, guys, there's no more video after this. So thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. Take it easy. Seriously. <laughs>